All right, let's spin our Castle Milk Moritz. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with that name. So we're going to start with our combed top. We're going to spin Z plot S. All right. Oof. I have a lot of uptake. Let's pull it down a bit. Now it's too little and I need more twist. I can already see this is another very springy wool and I think it's going to need whoops, a fair bit of twist. Now I am trying to make it a little thicker and it's it doesn't really want to. It wants to be a fairly thin yarn again. This is very much like the sewy fiber. It does have a lot of bounce to it, a lot of crimp. So let's just have a quick look. I'm just going based on feel on how much twist I think it should have. And look at that, it's darn near perfect. This is really lovely. It's, it's a very springy, smoothish fleece. That doesn't make any sense at all, eh? How can it be springy and smoothish? I don't know how to describe the feel of it. You can feel the spring, but it's not coarse. That must be what I'm trying to say. It has a very soft hand at the moment. Now, a lot of times what feels soft in the locks, once you spin it up, it brings out the coarseness. So we'll see how it feels when we're done spinning it. But for now, it's lovely. And I mean, it's top, so it's drafting beautifully. I'm not seeing any of those little flecks left. They're all kind of have fallen out along the way. So I'm going to assume it's not scurf because scurf will just stick. Now it is really short to process on comb, so I'm hoping I don't love this too much because it's going to take forever to comb. <laughs> and let's see, usually with these really springy wools, they love to spin thin. Really fine. So let's see how fine we can get this. All right, we can go finer yet. Oh, there we go. I'm right down to dental floss. Let's see if you can see that over my finger. All right, just as a challenge, I'm going to see how fine I can go before it snaps apart. I think that's it. Oh, it snapped. <laughs> that was fun, though. If I didn't have my uptake so high, this is how fine we got it. This would be a really good wool for spinning a very, very fine lace weight. Um, generally, if it's a high crimp wool, it will like to spin to a lace weight. I don't know why, but the high crimp wool just loves it. I'm assuming because the crimp makes it easier to hold just a couple of strands together and they'll cling to each other a lot better. Anyways. We're going to stop messing about here and get this experiment done. Now I have spun very fine, fine lace weights. I just really don't enjoy doing it because the plying takes so long. But maybe now that I have my e-spinner, I should try it again because I can do the plying on the electric wheel. And that should make things a lot easier. Hmm. 
Well, now I'm thinking I should set myself the challenge of doing a really, really fine lace weight. I know it's within my capabilities and I enjoy the challenge sometimes, but it's the plying. The plying just drove me nuts the couple of times I did it. It just, oh, it was hideous. But with the e-wheel, that might make all the difference. Maybe, maybe we'll use some of one of these samples and we'll make some lace sweets. See how fine we can go. All right, that's the end of that little bit of comb top I had. So I'm going to grab a little chunk of pink. And we'll spin that on just to delineate between our samples, although it should be readily obvious between the worsted and the woolen preps. All right, here is our decent roll egg. So let's spin this. trying for a oops tugged a little too hard on that i'm trying for as close to a true woolen spin as i can so i'm trying to do a long draw without it being a long draw does anybody know the name for it when you're doing a full woolen draw but it's not long draw because i'm only going between the orifice and my body but it is the long draw technique so I don't know if you can call it modified long draw, maybe? I don't know. Does it really need to have a name? I will just call it the short long draw. <laughs> As we know, I love chaos. And let me tell you, that name is chaos. The short long draw. That's what I'm going to call it now. I don't care what its real name is. It's the short long draw to me. Oh. Having a good time today with snapping my yarn. So the reason it's snapping is not because the fleece is inherently weak. It's actually my technique because I'm pulling too hard on it. It's more like the yarn is pulling apart than that the fleece is snapping. So this one is done in a proper roll egg. Drafts lovely. It makes a lovely woolen yarn. It actually drafts this roll egg is drafting beautifully. It's just like a dream, just woo, just like magic. I'm making sure to get a lot of twist in this. So if I decide to do it full woolen prep, I would switch to my fast flyer because with yarn this springy, you need to get a lot of twist into it. And I don't like treadling this fast all the time. It gets tiresome. This is about the pace I like to treadle. And then adjust all else to that treadle speed. All right, so that's the end of that roll egg. So we're going to spin in a little pink here. And we're going to grab our picked fleece. So this is just the locks just opened up. And I'm going to 
going to spin this woolen. So all I'm doing is getting my yarn into the cloud and then letting the twist get in there and catch the fibers so then I can do a long draw to pull it out. I can do my short long draw to pull it out. And you can see that it's just magically catching those fibers. And when it starts to lose grip, just wrap my fiber around it, we'll let it catch and let it twist again. Now here I've got lots of slubbies, so I'm gonna double draft those out. There we go. Now you can see how thin it's getting here. I don't want it that thin, so I'm just gonna take my fiber supply off, mash it up here, let it catch in the twist and thicken that up. And I got too thin again, so I'll mash it in, let it catch in the twist. Now you can see, being Dr. Chaos, that this would be a fun technique for me. This is just like a, a mash it kind of deal. But what I'm ending up with is a fairly consistent yarn it's not too wildly thick and thin. And I just have fun making it with all the chaos going on. That's just my thing. But if you have to control every aspect of your spinning, this is not a technique for you. It would just make you mental. I mean, I fully embrace the chaos. If you made me have to spin structurally, um, like, you know, count my treadles per inch and keep absolute track of grist and all that stuff. It would probably make me mental. But some people find that relaxing and it's all fine. It's all how you want to enjoy your craft. Me personally, I like the chaos. <laughs> as long as I have something usable in the end, I'm not too hung up on the the statistics and the mathematics and the do it this way kind of thing in case you hadn't figured that out by now. So we're almost through this. It's getting a little thin there again so I'll pop this back up. I've been uh, binge watching Vera on BritBox because I love Anne Cleve's characters. And she wrote uh, the Shetland books, and she also wrote the Vera Stanhope no novels. So the TV shows are loosely based on her stories. So I've been enjoying watching that. I just have such an addiction to British crime TV. I do not know why. I just do. I love them. So I've started calling everybody love and pet. All right, so there we go. We worked our way through our picked locks. There's a little bit of a slubby there. Just going to pop that one off because it's pretty big. All right, grab our pink. Spin some on for delineation. All right, now we're going to do some flicked locks. So I'm just going to lock this here. I'm going to grab my flicker. And a little bit of fleece. Now I don't even know if I'm going to be able to flick these without flicking my hand in the process, but we'll give it a shot. I'm doing this very gently because I know I will draw blood if I'm not careful. 
All right, that's one side. Let's get the other. All right, so there's our first flicked lock. Spin that worsted. Now, if I'm spinning a very fine lace weight, this is how I'll prep my, my fleece, is I just wash the locks, and then I flick each lock before I use it. I use a fairly low uptake, and I just, and a high speed flyer, so I can get lots of twist in there, because lace weights need lots of twist. Now, because it's so short, I'm looking for really chonky, well-defined locks to try to spare my fingers as much as I can. All right, so there's a base of twist. I'm either brave or stupid, you can vote on that because I'm good either way. <laughs> around trying to give myself as much length as I can to flick so I'm not getting my thumb it does comb out easy enough like it's not terribly tangled or sticking together it's quite lovely there's our second lock. All right, I think that's all the flip blocks I'm going to do because I'm terrified I'm going to just rip my thumb open, which would totally be something I'd do. So we will take this bobbin off. I'm just going to put this away. Put this to the side. Grab the fresh bobbin. Bobo is sneaking up on me. Hello, Bobo. All right, so we spun Z, so we will ply S. Helps if we put on our Scott Tension Band. Build up a twist. Get our uptake a little stronger. All right. So I'm just going to chain ply this. Now I've got my part that I plied back on itself. 
I use that to tie onto my leader because it's a little stronger because it's already plied. It tends to be a bit stronger and you don't have that breaking as you're trying to get started on your wheel. All right, here we go. See, you don't have that breaking. <laughs> it's just got to make a liar out of me. Okay, I want that twist to not escape. So, fold it back on itself. So I probably didn't get quite enough twist in there since it's snapping off right away. So what we're going to do is we're going to dial back our uptake a great deal so that it's barely pulling on. So that'll give us a chance to add a lot more twist before we put any pressure on it. So we have a better chance of getting it onto the wheel without snapping. Now you got to remember when you go to ply, as you're plying, you're actually taking twist out of your singles. So if it's not spun enough already, if it doesn't have enough twist already and you start taking that twist out of it, it's going to snap. So what you want to do is get that ply twist into it. So I'm just going real slow and gentle to get a lot of twist in that to strengthen the yarn before I increase my uptake so it'll go onto the wheel. There we go. Now we got started. All right, so that's the end of our flicked locks. Now we are into, this would be spinning from the cloud. All right, so that's the end of spinning from the cloud. So next is going to be, this is from a roll egg. Let me just adjust. All right. So, next is going to be our full worsted comb top. Which again is quite lovely. Oh, that's where I started doing my experiment with how thin can I spin? Now this one I did try to spin a little thicker. Even though it started off wanting to be fairly thin, I decided I wanted a little bit of chunk to this boy. All right, there's our end. Now, because it's a chain ply, I'm just going to put a little knot in the end to hold those three plies together. <laughs> Then I'll add a little extra twist and then fold it back on itself to keep that twist from escaping and let it through the wheel. Ugh, here's the kitty cameo for the day. Say hi, Bubble. Oh, he was outside. His feet are cold. There, we'll warm his feet up. He's like, no, I don't want my feet warmed up. Just let me go. <sighs> I, I mean, he loves me. He does. As much as he pretends he doesn't, he does love me. He's just a cat, and therefore he needs to play the game. All right, let's get this off the wheel. We use our body needy naughty. So my brother, we're rural here, in case you didn't know that, and my brother got a Starlink satellite. And uh, he saw pictures online of kitty cats sitting on the dish because the dish is heated to keep the snow off and we are in the middle of winter here. He's very disappointed that he's had it for a while now and no cats have come to sit on his dish. So I'm not the only crazy cat person in my family. All right, let's have a look. 
Now without setting the twist, here's what our samples look like. Yeah. I can sort them by look. Hold on. Let me get this straightened out here. All right. So, here are our samples. So right here is our worsted. Now it doesn't have the same kind of shine and definition that the Soe had. So combed is not the way I'm going to go and I'm kind of relieved about that because it's really short. But if you look you can see it does have nice definition but it's not the little pearls like we had with the Soe. So we will just take that one off the board. So next was our roll eggs. Now as you can see there's like it's really hard to even see the twist because the floof kind of takes over. So that would be so warm. And it is actually quite soft. I don't feel a huge itch factor in that. So that's quite nice as well. I really like that one. So that one's still on the table is carding Rolex. This was spinning from the cloud. Now you can see it's a massively thick and thin yarn. I don't hate it actually and it would be so quick because I could just sit down with a handful of locks and just start spinning just pick them out and just start spinning and see what happens and then our final one I've only got one strand showing but this was the flicked locks which looks very similar to the combed locks which it should because they're both basically the same prep this one just spun up thinner. It's nice, but again, I'm not getting that pearl look that you want with a true worsted. So I don't see the point in putting in all of that effort for something that just, because of the nature of the wool, it just goes poof and you can't see that definition in the spin. So I think... I think what we're going to do, I'm going to take half of what we have and I'm going to spin it just from the cloud like this and then I'll take half and I'll do roll eggs and spin them. And then when we have it done, I will knit it up into a sample so we can get a look at it. But as of right now, I'm finding compared to the Soe, this one is much floofier. It's lovely. It still feels quite soft. I can rub it against my neck and I don't get the Insta scratch. Now, maybe over the course of the day, that would start to itch. But just a quick wipe. Usually you can tell if they're going to be really coarse. You just rub it on your neck and you can feel it. This doesn't feel too bad. So I'm going to spin this up. I have a my 100 grams here which is actually quite a lot to work with it's actually giving me quite a bit to have fun with so i'm going to do that and uh, i'll bring you back to show you when i have the yarn finished see you in a bit so the lighting is really lousy today because as you can see it is snowing and my boys are mad because they can't be outside or they get wet so they're sitting in their seat in the front window just watching the snow and lattes flicking his tail in anger but they've finally accepted that i can't change the weather so while the weather is frightful i did comb up some of the why can i never remember the name of this fleece castle milk morit i don't know why i have such a hard time with that i did comb some of it and i have been spinning it worsted um get started here again so it does require a lot of twist so I have my fast flyer on there it is such a poofy yarn that or poofy fiber I should say that it does require a good deal of twist to wrangle it under control it's going to be very springy I'm sure but 
it is lovely it's not as nice a spin as the soey was surprisingly but it is quite delightful now if you're watching this video there is a link to the store the etsy store where i bought it from uh, marie redding and she has kindly said that if you use find her through the link i'll put in the description box message her if you order and she'll throw in a goodie bag for you so if you go to the description box and use the link there to go to marie redding's etsy store you can place your order then just send her a message that you found her store through bf fiber arts by tamson video and she'll throw in a goodie bag for you isn't that just the sweetest thing ever now, because I'm in Canada, it did take a little while to get here, but it wasn't that bad at all, considering it had to come overseas and the nightmare that shipping is right now. So I'm very pleased with uh, my dealings with this shop, and I'm super excited that she's giving you a goodie bag to go with any orders you make. So don't forget to check out that link in the video description. And if you order, let her know that you found her through my videos, and she'll throw you in a free goodie bag. Yay! Now, back to the spinning. I'm actually getting a lot of yardage because it does want to spin relatively fine. Not as fine as the sew we wanted to spin. So there is a difference between the fleeces. And I have a bunch of roll eggs made up. So when I'm done spinning this, I will switch to roll eggs and I'll bring you back and we'll spin a bit of that. So I've moved on to the roll eggs and I finally got my wheel set up to do one handed long draw. Almost. Oh, darn, I lost it. I was doing it for most of the roll eggs. So, of course, as soon as I go to film, that's when it stops cooperating. <clears throat> Let's see if I can't get this going again, though. Got a little bit of debris in there, so I'm just going to pluck that out while I'm here. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get this one-handed long draw going. Okay, we need to increase our uptake just a smidge. Nope, a smidge more. All right. Smidge more. I'm almost there. Still not quite. Ah. It's just, it's such a fine balance point, and you have to have it. Okay, let's try again. Oh, this roll egg doesn't want to cooperate. I'm going to get this yet because I was literally doing it for most of my last roll egg. But this is how I do long draw. I just sit back and I just come as far as my body. So I'm not twisting my shoulder or my hips. I'm sitting square to my wheel and I'm still doing a long draw. Oops, just about lost my yarn there. Now, I do use a heavy uptake when I'm doing long draw. I just, I find bracing against the twist easier to do. Some people prefer to have almost no uptake when they're doing long draw. And that's fine. It's all a matter of figuring out what works for you so that you can have a nice, relaxing spin. There we go. And if you can get it set up to do a one-handed long draw, it can be a great deal of fun. So I can just sit and watch TV and I can do my long draw without stressing my body, my hips or my shoulders. I can just sit back, 
relax, and do my long draw. My hand doesn't really come past my shoulder. And we'll join another one. And then when I get to where I want to add the twist and wind it on, I just fold it over my finger to stop the twist from traveling. Feed it on. Stop the twist from traveling. So I let the twist in. Do my draw. Fold it over my finger to add the twist as I feed it on. Now you can also just pull it out and just hold it there until you feel you have your twist and then feed it on in one swoop. But I just prefer to draw out my length and then just gradually feed it on. It's just my preference. It's not that any one method is good or bad. It's just what you prefer to do. They all achieve the same end result. And as we know, I'm just all about do what works for you. I don't care how crazy it sounds or looks or is. As long as you get what you're going for, that's all that matters. So I'm going to finish spinning up my roll legs. And then I will chain ply this. So we will have two samples. We'll have a woolen and a worsted. And we'll come back. And I'll show you that. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm plying and the struggle is real. I mean, can you even call yourself a spinner if you haven't tried to spin with a cat in your lap? <laughs> He's coming back. He's just going to settle in. <laughs> He's like, stop moving your legs. Stop it. I want to lie here. Give me the cuddles. Stop spinning. <laughs> okay, are we happy now? I don't think he's happy now. So apparently I have to stop spinning for a bit and cuddle Bobo. He seems to think that's his right. <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to work here. He's got one claw dug in. There we go. You know, if you shift your butt this way and sit like that. Oops, wrong way. There. How's that? No, not good enough. Oh, he's going to leave now. He's mad. <laughs> I just had to share that. So I'm just plying up this little samples I made of the Castle Milk Morin. I am chain plying the woolen spun and here's how it's looking. I'll zoom in. Ooh. And then uh, I've just put in a pink marker so I'll know the difference between the woolen and the worsted, especially since it's not quite as obvious with this fleece as it was with the Zoe, but I'm going to get this done up, maybe cuddle, cuddle Bobo for a little bit, since apparently he wants some attention, and I will be back. All right, the spin is done. Here is the worsted, and it's very springy, and here's the woolen. Put them side by side so you can get a look. Now, I have not washed them yet to set the twist. Now you can see the worsted definitely is denser and has more definition, but it doesn't make the nice pearls like we got with the sewing. So that's why I decided to do mostly a woolen spin. I'm going to wash these up to set the twist, hang them to dry, and then we'll uh, knit up some samples with them and see how it goes. Now this one does feel... It does have a little bit of itch to it. But, again, softer than I expected. So, I'll go give it a wash, and I'll see you when that's done. Alright, so we have our knitted samples done. 
First, this is the Castle Milk Moret comb, spun worsted, and then chain plied. And here's how our sample looks. Now you can see that the stitch or the yarn doesn't make those little pearls like I like so much in a worsted, but it does make a very nice defined yarn. And you can see how miserable my tension is. Not much of a knitter, I'm afraid. It is um, a coarser yarn. Would definitely make excellent warm sweaters for outerwear. So here is the Castle Milk Moret combed into roll eggs and spun woolen and then knit it up. So you can see how you get that texture from the woolen spun. This would be so warm. Now I knit these on the same size needles, really tiny ones. I probably should have gone up a couple sizes, but I knit those on the same size needles and I tried to keep the singles about the same size, but the, of course, the woolen spun poofs up a lot more than the worsted spun. So you can see the difference in the end result between woolen and worsted. So the woolen would trap more air and be warmer. It also makes for a tighter fabric, so that would keep more of the wind out. But either way, this is just a gorgeous fleece. I really enjoyed working with it. And I would definitely recommend if you can get your hands on some to try some of this. So that's it for sample number two. Uh, sample number three. I'm not sure what we're going to do next. I guess we'll find out when we get there. So if you like this, do this stuff down below because I do stuff like this all the time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Dr. Chaos out.